now we're gonna finish off our fifth tutorial with the third activity we're gonna be making a screwdriver and in this activity we're gonna go through a bit more about creating components um, so it's sort of a little uh, appetizer into sort of sub assemblies so in this case we we'll make a screwdriver we we'll do is save as usual we we'll type in screwdriver enter to save if you think about it what are the three components of the screwdriver so we have the handle the part your hand holds onto you have the shaft or the shank whatever you want to call it um, that's the metal rod and then we have the bit at the end right this can change you can have the phillips head or flat head whatever it is so using that we are thinking now if we have three components of our body let's create three separate com components for each in this case i'll start with the handle first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select assemble new component right there should be a icon here by default here new component if not just select new component here so i'm going to select new component here what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the name i'm going to name this handle and you can see here it's telling me to select a parent in this case my parent is this component uh, that is in my design screwdriver which i've titled it so that's fine i'm going to hit ok and by default if you have the activated button on it should activate it in your component here remember with activation if i were to select this then now i'm going to work in this component space if i select my individual component then i'm going to be working in this component only right so i'm going to activate my component here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a cylinder i'll select the front plane and i'm going to create a cylinder of 28 millimeters hit enter and i'm going to extrude this out in the front by 100 millimeters in this case i have to type negative yours might be different i'm going to hit ok and now i have a 100 millimeter cylinder now if you think about screwdrivers they have that sort of weird pattern on their handle to have better grip right so how can we replicate that if you think about it how do we do it for our door stop so we created a sketch and then we created a pattern right but before we used a rectangular pattern but this is a circle it's a cylinder so how are we going to right so what we're going to do first is we're going to create our circle and now I want it to be lined up exactly along the edge, but of course I don't, I don't have a point to snap to, no issue. I'll create a line in the center, and I'll snap vertical, so it's a vertical line now. And when I trim off the edge here, it will snap automatically to my circle. There'll be a point here that I can select, you see? So I'm going to make this a construction line because I'm just using it as a reference. I'll go into my circle tool. I'm going to select the point that I just made. I'm going to expand this out by about 6 millimeters. I'm going to hit enter. And now I have my sketch. Now again, how do we then pattern this? We can use the circular pattern tool. And why is that? Because if we use the rectangular pattern here, I can only go in a rectangular pattern, which is not what we want. What we want is a circular pattern. And we'll select our sketch. In this case, it's the object. And now because it's circular, we're going to find a center point instead. And so we'll select our center point here, which is our main circle. And we can decide we want a full distribution. In this case, it's 360 degrees. Or we can have uh, less, you know, partial, whatever you want. You can select it here. In this case, I want there to be six. Make it even. So I've got six circles going in a circular pattern. So I'll hit OK. And now I can see it's automatically given me my sketches like so. So now in my sketch, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to press E to extrude and I'll select all my circles right so in this case I'll select each face so now that I've got all my six faces selected I will click and drag it out to extrude into my cylinder and I'm going to extrude this by 75 millimeters okay remember because there's only one object to cut I don't have to worry about that I'm just going to leave it as so and I'll cut and here you can see we have our uh, sort of weird almost like a revolver chamber shape, right? This is the handle. Right now, we want it to not be so blocky. We want it to be more rounded, right? Something that we can actually grip. So what we'll do is we'll press F for our fillet tool, and we are going to select each of these six faces here. 
And the reason we do that is because they're all individual edges now, right? And if we select all six edges and we pull in our fillet, you can see it conforms in that way, um, like a proper screwdriver. In this case, I'll give it a fillet of 10. Right, I'll hit OK. But anyway, now that we have this fillet, the reason why I selected off of this fillet again is because I want now to do a fillet on this inner edge. I don't want it to be so sharp. So I'm going to press F. Now I can select this entire line, right? If I hadn't, if I'd gone back and to my old one and I hit plus, you can see I can't select that straight line again. Now it's split, split into three, right? Which I don't really want. I mean, you might be able to get away with some sort of geometry, but I, I'm old fashioned. I like to separate my fillets. So I'm going to press another fillet. I'm going to select this one whole edge and I'll select all six again. So now that I've got my six fillets done, what I'll do is I'll fillet this by 2.5. Hit OK. And I'm going to fillet the last one, which is on these um, inner edges. Oops. Like so. So again, six, and I'll do a fillet of one. Okay. So with that done, I'll hit OK. And now you can see we've got a bit more of a... Um, screwdriver handle shape going on. If you want to play around with the geometry, go ahead. Maybe you don't like it to be so straight. That's fine, just round it off. But here we have our handle. Now we need to make um, a sort of grip for our thumb and our index finger, right? And how can we do that? Yep. So remember back in our hex nut tutorial, we wanted to create a complex geometry. So what we did was we created a sketch and then revolved it around an axis. So in this case here, what I can do is I can create a sketch and I'll select our middle axis here, right? I'm going to go and create not a circle, but an ellipse. An ellipse is essentially an oval, right? So we're going to select our first point, that's our length. And we're going to make this um, 21, right? We can play around, of course, but for me, I know the dimensions. So I'll make it 21. Left click. Now I can switch over to the height or the width. And in this case, I'll make this 6 millimeters. Hit enter, and if I zoom in, now you can see I've got an oval or an ellipse. So I'll double click to select the entire thing, and I can position it however I want. In this case, I'll just position it somewhere like so. Okay, that's fine to me. I'm going to hit finish sketch, and now I can go into my revolve. I'll select my profile, make sure to select the profile here. And for my axis, I can select this axis here going through the center, right? Which would be the green axis here, the Y axis. So if I select that, you can see it's done a rev re uh, revolve function. And it's going to, I'm going to select cut if it's not already selected the cut. Hit OK. And now I can see I have my curved geometry in the center, right? So again, if you need, if you think about 3D space, think of how you can replicate these 3D spaces using the 2D sketch tools and your um, 3D solid tools. This comes with practice, right? Experience and practice. But for now, I think the handle looks good. I'm just going to create a hole in the middle so that we can insert our shank or our shaft. So again, I'll use the hole tool. I'll drag this into the center point. And what I'll do is I want to, because if you look at it this way, you can see our drill bit is a cone. I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be flat. So I'll select our drill point as flat. This is what we want. And so we want our um, width of our shank to be seven millimeters. And we want the depth of our hole to go in about 50 millimeters. Okay. So we can see on the side, this is what is going to cut. It's in the center, we're happy, we'll hit OK. And now we have our hole in our handle. Now if I were to split this in half, so you can see, you can see this has a hole in the middle. Okay, so now we've got our um, handle done. This is our component finished. So if we want to make the shank now, what do we do? Create a new component. We'll again name it, uh, we we'll just call this shaft simplicity now again the parent now watch out right my parent is selected as handle but i don't want my parent to be the handle i want it to be a um, part of my screwdriver right my shaft is not a part of the handle it's a part of the screwdriver as a whole 
So I'll unselect my parent and I'll select the screwdriver, hit OK. And now you can see I've got a component for shaft. And by default, Fusion will uh, gray out um, parts that you are not currently, well, sorry, components that you're not currently working on, right? If I activate this entire parent, you can see that now it's revealed. If I select the handle, I can work on it again. But if I select the shaft, I can't work on it. Notice that my timeline is gone. Oh crap, did I just lose all my work? No. Each component has a separate timeline. So this gets very useful when you have to do a lot of different modeling and use a lot of tools. Imagine if I were to go through and do the shaft, all the extrude, the curvatures, whatever, the sketches, it's going to be very confusing. Now this way I can see exactly what I did to make my handle. And if I go into my, oops, where am I? Yeah. If I go back into my shaft, I haven't started it yet, but let's just say I create my um, shaft, which in this case, I'm going to select the inside of my hole here. I'm just going to extrude this out. I'll just make it any length. It doesn't matter. You can see now that my timeline is separate. But if I go to my screwdriver, it's all there. See? So this is just a way to organize your components, especially as you're modeling. And it's a good habit to build, essentially. So what happens then if I do not, ex if I accidentally selected my component? So I was back, I was here before, right? Let's just say, and I create a new component. And oh, I've selected my handle as my component. And I put here, I'll just name this the shank as an example. Hit OK. Now you can see that my component is inside my handle. And you can prove that because if I hide it, you can't see the shank. It's under here. So be very careful where you select your parent components. My shank is, again, not part of my handle, but part of the screwdriver as a whole. So I want to make sure that the parent is what I... the An appropriate parent is selected so that I can sort of organize it correctly in my head. Right? Now, if, my, if I wanted a rubber uh, wrap around the handle, then sure, I can just type this as um, rubber wrap, perhaps. And then I can start creating a rubber wrap. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. So that's fine. And so what I'll do is I'll go back to my shaft. And here, I've already sort of done it. So again, um, just for the sake of... One second. Okay, so again, activate your shaft component. I'm going to delete this just to show you what I've done. But here, you can see that I want to basically create a cylinder right, or rod starting from this face. So what I can do is I can just go in there. I'll select my face here. So I'll press E and I'll select the inner face. And I can double check that I've selected the right face by moving my viewpoint. And so I've got my face from my previous component. I'll extend this out and I'll make this 150 millimeters. All right. Hit OK. And now I've got my shaft. That's it, that's as simple as that, right? And now my shaft is done, okay? Like this. Actually, now that I look at it, it's a little bit long, so maybe I'll change this to, oh, that no one is 100, 250. Yeah, 150, here we go. That's correct. That's a bit more correct. Okay, so now we've got our, our um, shaft. What we'll do is, again, create the, bit, the drill bit, so, sorry, the screw bit. So we'll create a new component, Again, make sure that we selected the right parent. We're going to select the screwdriver and we're going to name this the bit. Hit OK. And you see, again, everything that we're not working on has been grayed out. Now, there's a, you can adjust this in your preferences. Um, I don't usually do it, so you may have to Google it yourself. I can't recall. I think it helps to not be able to see it, but if you really can't like visualize, then go and change the setting. Anyway, we want to create the drill bit here. So what we're going to do is again select the face, hit extrude, and we'll extrude this by, uh, what was it, 10? Yeah, 10. Okay, hit OK. And now we've got the start of our screw bit. So we're going to make a flat head screwdriver. So what we'll do is, if you think about the shape of a flat head, what it is is essentially a curve that goes up until it hits a rectangular point, right? So how would we make that, you think? How would we create this shape from a cylinder? Then you, should cut it. you can do that if you want. So really, I'm working off memory here, but what you can do is you can create a canvas 
and put a real screwdriver bit in there and you can sort of trace the shape. What I'll do is I will just create a sketch in the middle plane. I'm going to take a fit, uh, uh, what I'm going to do first actually is I'm going to make a mirror line because again it's symmetrical. So I'll make a mirror line, press X to make a construction line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a spline, sorry, spline here. And I'm just going to say I want it over here somewhere, okay? And I'm just going to put a few points until I'm happy I'll put my point there. Okay, remember, hit enter, not escape for splines. And now I've got my spline shape, like so, as you can see. So now this is coming out at a curve. So what I can do is, remember, put constraints. If I want my line to be straight, this handle needs to be straight. Right? See how it curves with the handle? So in this case, I'm going to select the handle and I'm going to put a vertical or horizontal constraint and now it is straight, you see? Similar with this, I want this to be going up straight, so I'll put a vertical and now you can see these will go up pretty straight, right? I, if I wanted to, I can put this in more, but I'll just pull it out extra just because I, I don't need this to be perfectly tangent. So in this case, I can go and adjust my curves however I like. Um, I think this looks fine to me. What I'm going to do now is, again, I want to cut this from my body, so I need to enclose this in the profile. So I'll bring my line up, and I'll connect these to my lines. And now I have a face, you see? I don't need to trim this, so you can trim it if you like. I can't be bothered. I've got this profile. So what I'll do is mirror. I'll select the lines that I want. In this case, it's all these three lines. I'll select my middle mirror line. Hit OK. Wait for it to load. Now I've got my two faces. One, two, right? Finish sketch. I can press E for extrude. If I rotate over, you will see what happens. I'm going to extrude out like this. But this is only one side, right? So what can I do? Again, go to symmetric. Now I'll cut both ways. Or I can always do two sides and select the arrow to, to say how much, I, how far I want it to go. Right? In this case, symmetric is fine. So I'll hit OK to cut. And now I have my flat hit screwdriver bit. So now all my components are modeled. I'm going to go back to my screwdriver component. I'll activate that. And you can see I have my entire screwdriver model. And if any point I want to change my bits, I can always change it um, here. I can hide them. If say, right now I have this bit and I'll call this a flat hit. Okay, a flat hit bit. If I ever want to go in and change my bit shape, let's, so, let's just say I want a... Um, I want a 4. Right? I want it to have that Phillips hit. So how would I make a Phillips hit? But I want to go home soon. I've got a wife and kid to feed. You know, I've got games to play. What I do? I want to make... Can't rotate it? Exactly, right? So what I can do is I'll go here, I'll click on this, and I'll select Control c click on my canvas, Control v and I've got my drill bit. Now, this is just a shortcut. I'm going to Control z to get out back here. You can also use the copy. So if I go to M, move or copy, I'll just select this body here create a copy and I can rotate this hang on I've got to select the point correctly so again I've misselected my point so I'll select pivot select pivot done now I will take this like so 90 degrees I'll hit OK and it's made me a copy so the move copy is in the same tool and now um, again I want this if I combine this it's gonna make a flat so I want to copy this again I'm just going to control C, control V because I'm not going to make any edits to this. Hit OK. I'm going to hide this because I want to keep this the same. I'm going to combine. One, two. Select my bodies. Hit OK. And now I've got a Phillips hit, right? So I'll just call this, rename this to Phillips. Now I've got my Phillips hit. Again, if I want this to be smaller, I can always just add a chamfer. It's not a big deal. I'll just do that to make it look a little bit nicer. Something like that. Okay. See? So again, this is how you play around with the geometry, how you get the shapes you like, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my entire component. And just like that, I have 
my Phillips head, if I ever want to change it, I can always go to my bodies and flip it this way. And if you go to the shaded view, it should look a little bit nicer. So, see? So I'm going to add some appearances. And again, I can select the faces and make black streaks or whatever I want. In this case, I'll just do it with a simple red. And now if I look at it, I've got my screwdriver. I want to change it to a Phillips. I've got a Phillips head now. See? So this is just how you use components to organize your files. If I ever want to go back and change things, I can always activate my component and my timeline is organized. I want to change the handle, my handle timeline is organized. If I want to just work on the screwdriver as a whole, right, I can always go there and whatever body I create will be part of this component. So this is just an introduction to the different components. As you can see here, it's a lot, lot more organized. You're not going to have thousands upon thousands of bodies or sketches. So yeah, that's the end.